Alright guys, this is um, a video about raid leader and a, just a bit of raid tactics. So basically go through um, a little bit on the raid leader build, a little bit what you should take and what um, how tough you should be. Uh, a bit of talk on the sigils, what sigils, um, different sigils you can take for builds. And uh, just general raid tactics like uh, pushes, regroups and stuff. Well, firstly, the raid leader build. You want to be the toughest guy out there. You want to have really high armor and really a lot of health. On a guardian, preferably a guardian or a warrior. You want to be in the melee train, leading the melee train. And probably preferably on a uh, guardian with staff. Just so you can time them in powers, time the stability. And really, you go, um, it all ro revolves around you. Probably best to lead on a guardian. Uh, I'll show you one trait you should take for a guardian is um, force of will, 300 vitality. Really good trait. Really a lot of toughness, a lot of vitality. You really have a high survivability. It'd be really good. A uh, few sigils. There's only um, two sigils, so I'd say. Sigil of water. And the sigil of renewal heals allies on weapon swap and heals allies on hit. They're both pretty good for staff and um, but nice bit of healing. That's about it for the sigils. A runic soldier been over before. Uh, raid tactics. Uh, firstly, I'd say group composition is probably the most important um, part of the raid. Getting everyone in the right groups, so guardians and warriors together. You want about two guardians in each party, in the melee party this is, and about three warriors. So if you're following the builds that I've posted already, it would be like two normal guardians, two uh, worker warriors, a normal warrior build. And then like one might stacker in the melee party. And you want to have about 15 guys in the melee. At least. Then you want to have um, Ellie's and Necros together. Just uh, mix it up a bit. Have a play three Ellie's in one party. Two, two Necros with them. And then have uh, three Necros and two Ellie's with them. another party. Uh, assist team. Uh, I haven't really gone on about assist team. But um, just form another party with their assist team. Just so they can target uh, individual targets. And we don't have to target you. Oh great, I disconnected. Um, yeah, so group composition, that's about it. Just form the melee train. Make sure it's really nice and tight. Nice and tidy. Build-wise, the builds I've posted, everyone's about the same toughness. About the might stack is a little bit less tough, but um, they got a lot more maneuverability with the warhorn and a sword, great sword. So you can move around a lot more and evade a bit more. So you want everyone about the same toughness, so it just, all they have to work on is positioning really. And if anyone, anyone's going down, it's their positioning. Just going wrong. Um, so firstly, I'd say the bomb. The bomb is all your damage, all your, uh, your main damage really in the raid. Main damage in a fight. This is where everything goes off, all the wells go off. You just your main focus in the fight is the bomb. All the other time you're regrouping, you're uh, range pressuring, or you're just like peeling the onion, going around the sides, auto attacking around the sides. But your bomb is where everything goes off. Your um, for example, greatsword twos, everyone pulls them in. The greatsword five, uh, hammers, hammer stuns, uh, necros put their wells, Ellie's put their fire fields. Meteor showers, all that going off. <coughs> That's pretty much the bomb. Uh, control, control leads into the bombs. I'll keep on a. Uh, probably all links together. Share links together. You really want to get people control for the bombs. You really want everyone in that spot where you're bombing because it takes a few seconds for necros to cast their wells, for the wells to start uh, doing damage. It takes a few seconds for the meteor showers, the fire fields to go down. 
The melee can do a pretty much instant damage, which is really nice. Make sure you get um, those leaps. Every melee class has got a leap. Make sure you're making uh, use of it. Uh, just an example. If you're going in for a bomb, you want them controlled. What I've been showing you for the pushes anyway with the guardians. You leap into the back line. You pull with number five. You pull them in, and your great sword. Uh, well, what'll be happening there? As soon as you pull them in, just say you want a hammer, uh, warrior to hammer stun. That'll give them extra bit of control and nice bit of hammer training. Uh, if a guardian has a hammer, you can then do a ring. Or if a guardian's got a staff, you can uh, pop a line of ward in in the middle. Just a lot of um, control and CCs, just so they can't move. You want to try and pace it out, so say um, line of warding goes in first, uh, then greatsword guardians um, pull them in, then the hammer suns come off, then the greatsword, um, not greatsword, hammer uh, guardians put a ring around them, just in that order, so just so they can um, pull in, controlled, and then keep them there for a little bit of time, and then you can do all your damage after that. You only want one. Um, one control control skill per uh, player, so you don't want uh, hammer and greatsword guy whirling them in, then making the hammer uh, ring. You want him to be able to just whirl in and then do his um, number two whirl attack. Same with uh, staff. You just want him to put a line down, and then you can just go straight to the whirl. He doesn't have to concentrate on pulling them in. It takes too much time to do control. It takes too much time to um, control them. And they won't be able to do enough damage. You really got to just spread it out, spread your control out throughout the fight. You don't want to waste it because obviously they've got stability, and uh, you only be catching the ones without stability. The next, uh, say, subject is boon stripping, taking their stability off. <coughs> uh, Obviously you know about Mesmer's, the Null Fields, and um, the Necros, the Wells. The Well of Corruption takes a boon off each pulse. It's five targets, and the Nullfield takes a boon off each pulse. It's five targets as well. One thing you don't, might not know is the um, Mesmer Greatsword. Uh, skill 3, I believe. Actually removes a boon as well. Really uh, useful. Removes one boon for five targets. It's only a 10 second cooldown with a trait. Something to look um, into. Uh, one thing you might not uh, know as well, it's a bit of a secret actually, is uh, the Lich Form. Why most people take Lich Form is because they're the skill 5. Very high damage, but the skill 5 removes every boon from the target. That's 5 targets as well. You might not know that, it's a, um, it's a mark. So if you've got the right traits that I showed you in the build and you pop Lich Form, use that mark and then you bomb you're going to have a lot of effective really effective bomb They're, none of them are going to have stability make sure they pop stability first then bomb it really useful tactic make sure you work that out lich form up once they pop this ability move their uh, boons all their boons then go for the bomb then go for the pools then go for the lines of warden and really high damage it they won't have any regen any protection really useful uh, tactic um, last subject on uh, dealing damage really in control is uh, killing the downs. You want to make sure the downs stay dead and you want to make sure they can't get bannered. So once someone's down you just bomb on them instantly. All your damage on their downs, just keep auto attacking, auto, uh, attacking that uh, target. If anyone's down, two or three players down in the same spot, make sure all your melee training is on that spot. Just damage them down. Make sure they can't banner him up. Make sure they um you won't get rallied up by any of your scrubs. That's a really important thing to do. Really important thing to watch out for. Um, assist team. Assist team will be taking down targets. Hopefully, if you've got one set up, taking down targets left and right. Leave them to finish them off as well. Any targets they take down will fin uh they should finish off. Um. Finding low targets, if a melee train uh, warrior or guardian like dodges out or um, is pretty low, 
and they like separate from the Zerg or the melee train. Instantly lunge on that target and get him down, finish him down. That makes all the difference in a, t a really close fight. Just targeting in solo players makes a hell of a lot of difference. And will tip the balance in your favour. Um, yes, yeah, about it for damage and control. I go on to healing, regroups and healing, water fields and powers. They all heal. You've got on the move healing, which is the shouts, the warrior shouts, um, guardians F2 virtue. Uh, hold the line shout gives the regen. We've got um, Ellie's for uh, caster parties, switching out for their um, war achievement that heals them anyway with um, the minor trait. You've got uh, tomes as well from the Guardian. You want to number them tomes out so they uh, spread out the healing. Or if you're really, really low, just get that burst healing out. You'll see a lot of um, <coughs> stuff heals on a Guardian. Now there's two regroups. There's a regroup for Waterfields and a regroup for Empowers. Or both. You can use both. Or both at the same time, I mean. But you see Empower, it heals about 2k at the end of it. So you can regroup for Empower. 3 second regroup. Everyone Empowers up and then they move again. Quite fast regroup. It's just based on melee train. Uh, the melee train just standing there, going around. Uh, range don't have to come in for that. But the waterfield uh, regroup, uh, a commander will jump off, or if you're commanding, dodge off to the side, call for a regroup, three, two, one, waterfield down, make sure everyone blasts that waterfield, make sure you uh, count down as well. So uh, the small waterfield is used for the regroup, not the big one, skill three on the Ellie, it's used for the regroup, the big one is used for um, well, just in the fighting, in the fight. So it only lasts for two seconds, so you've got to be really quick with the blasts. Make sure everyone shouts out their blast, make sure everyone shouts out their um water fields down. Really helpful. Um last thing on healing, it's more healing but um condition cleansing with like uh I'll show that rune again. Rune of the soldier, or it's called rune of the trooper now. Moves condition on each affected ally every time you use a shout. Your melee train should be running that. And um, these shouts will uh, clear conditions. And purging flames. A really good condition remover. Plus the food buffs. I haven't really talked about yet. The food buff is. Um, check. Yeah. Leak soup. See that? 36% condition duration. And uh, 60 vitality, really good. Poultry leak soup, really good for um, condition cleansing. Ruins of the Melehandru, if you're um, if you got them, I think it's Melehandru. Uh, does 25% condition duration and 25% uh, stun duration. That's decreased. It's a really nice rune to get. It's quite expensive. But condition shouldn't really be a problem if you've got it all set up right with the shouts. Uh, so you don't really need water um, Ellie's to remove conditions on water fields or when they give regen. Your melee chain should be uh, removing it pretty easily. Um, yeah, that's about it for condition cleansing. It shouldn't really be a problem. It should be quite easy. Uh, one thing about conditions, make sure you've got um, poison removed. Make sure you, um, especially for regroups, make sure you've got it clear, cleansed first, or your regroup will be 33% uh, less effective. It's a very useful strategy. Not a lot of people remember it, not a lot of raid leaders remember it. Make sure everyone's got um, poison off. Um, for conditions on the enemy, Adding conditions. Uh, there's a lot of conditions. Well, every condition has its bonuses, but there's three or four conditions that you really want to main main on. That's blindness with a uh, necro's uh, plague form. 
really getting them blinded in their wells. Blind is um, really, really useful, obviously, because they can't hit you. <coughs> um, what's the other one? Um, chill. Chill, probably a really good skill. Not used that much. Keeping them chilled is uh, really effective. And the two other ones is obviously poison. I've just been through. Make sure you get poison on their restack. That'd be a necro's job with their skill three and the staff. Really poison them for their restack. Then you'd be weakness with um, warriors blasting the waterfields. Try and get your waterfields um, maybe just not that far away from the fight. Make sure you, um, them warriors can give all AOE weakness. It's a really good uh, condition. They'll hit 50% uh, less 50% of the time and a 50% uh, reduction in endurance generation really overlooked really really useful that's probably the main three or four there's a lot of other ones but most of them are a bit of damage condition damage more than um effect yeah I think that's about it so the next thing is rotation the rotations I've talked about the 16 second rotation in some of the videos. Pretty much water fields and um, warrior blasts are 16 seconds cooldown and empowers are 16 seconds. So the 16 second rotation is basically when you empower, you're walking in, you start the fight. 16 seconds after you first empowered, you want to be on the restack. You want to be restacking 16 seconds after you first empowered. No matter how um, the fight's going, you want to keep up that healing, constant healing. You can't really rely on um, uh, movement healing, on the move healing. You want to always restack. The guild that restacks the most probably wins uh, 9 times out of 10. Just because they got more healing and more organised, and they're all stayed together longer. That's what a lot of commanders forget though. They think, um, they think it's one and they stop uh, regrouping, restacking, and then they start um, getting peeled off one by one. Start getting low. For a restack, you want to just um, say you're in the middle of a fight, you want to restack in three, two, one, you dodge off, restack on me, waterfield down, first to empower. Wolf it down, everyone blasts it, then you get back into the fight. It only wants to be, say, uh, this is the middle of the fight. It only wants to be just about here. Just about 600 range away from the middle of the fight. Just so you can clear the field. Just so you can get the water field down, blast it, and then get back into it. Doesn't have to be too far away. Because your range will still be um, attacking, and their range will be still on you. No matter how far away you are. Uh, rotations. You want to try and rotate um, stability pretty well. Stability one, and stability two. Stability one pops it first in the first engage. So we're fighting through, fighting through, and then on the restack, stability will be gone, and you have to restack. That's when the second stability, the second push, we call uh, call it. First push is the first one you go through, obviously. The second one is after the restock, after the regroup, then you pop it. Stability 2 pops, you get through again. Uh, on the first engage, on the first push, you should have your dodges, all your dodges. On the second one, you should have at least one dodge. So you shouldn't be caught on the second or first push at all. But obviously you've got your uh, virtues, your shouts, all your healing going off anyway. There'll be a lot of damage in the middle. Remember, when you're trying to bomb uh, raid leaders, four seconds at most, four seconds at most. Get in there, pull them in, do your damage, three, two, one, and dodge out. If you're pretty low, go for a uh, restack, hit five a bit more, just hit around the sides, then restack. Can't stress enough the importance of restacks and regroups, really, really important. 
they win fights. Um, that's about the answer tactics. You've got to find your own tactic, really. You've got to find your own uh, way of style of uh, leading and uh, bombing and what everyone's strengths are in your group. But that is pretty uh, basic, simple down tactics of uh, guild raids. I won't tell you my special tactic, obviously. It's my special one. Um, commands. Get a lot of um, asking about commands. What what to call, what to say, what to do. What you've got to remember. Most leaders don't remember at all. That's why I hate most leaders. The, uh, the raid leader reacts to the situation. The raid reacts to the raid leader. So basically, if you're slow to react to the situation, the raid will be slow to react to you and the whole situation in general, and they'll be punished for it. You're about one second, one and a half seconds uh, faster than the whole raid. That's what most leaders tend to uh, forget. They say, oh, why are you dying? Why are you fucking failing? Because they're dodging off and they're not telling you, and you're getting smashed. So you want to call everything one second before you do it, basically. So, alright, see the enemy, empowers, empowers guys, three, two, one. Then everyone's empowered up at the same time. It's one second before. Alright, we're going to push in, feel now. Just one second before um, you really actually want it. Alright, pushing in, three, two, one. And about here, you're in. Obviously, your rotation for um, pushing the first push. Should be at least a line and a stack. Um, maybe you want to mobilize. Not too much control, not too much uh, damage. Just so they pop the stability, just so they are um, in combat. Taking a little bit of health. Just enough health for them to regroup and restack. Back. When you're regrouping, uh, when you're dodging off, tell them uh, which way to dodge. Say left. Obviously, because we're facing them here, this way. So left would be this way. And if we were facing straight on towards him here, left would be this way. It's always towards uh, the enemy, the direction you shout. Make sure you shout a direction as well. Even if it's wrong, just make sure you shout a direction. A lot of raid leaders say dodge and <laughs> where. And they dodge off somewhere and you're like one second behind and you get smashed. It can be really frustrating if you've got a bad raid leader. Always because could they blame it on you as well. So, bit of a rant here. Um, yeah, some other uh, calls and uh, obviously you want to call out stability, call out the veal and the empower. That's the first little. Um, put it into segments. So empower is the first segment. Three, two, one. Feel now. Three, two, one. Lines and stacks. Immobilize. Stability up. More damage, more damage. Pushing through, pushing through. Get to the restack in three, two, one. Powers up. Three, two, one. Back in we go. Stability two. Uh, say whatever your bomb is, just full damage here, full damage here, pull them in, pull them in, rings go, hamstones go, hamstones go, damage here, damage here, damage here, and dodge out, dodge out left, dodge out left, restack to me, restack to me, what was one, what was one? Oh, yeah, that's one thing, uh, number in waters, number in tomes, number in banners. You put your strongest uh, player on waters one, main waters, if he's, nobody's got a mic, got some mic, uh, waters one. Just so it's really reliable for um, them getting them waters down. Then waters two and waters three, a bit more high damage. More high damage builds might go down a little bit uh, faster, but hopefully they're still reliable. For an Ellie rotation, first uh, time the commander calls for waters, Ellie one does it. Second time Ellie two, third time Ellie three. Then it goes back. Sixteen seconds is quite a short cooldown. So uh. You shouldn't really need more more than three Ellie's. 
But if you have, just get the other two on damage or just back up waters. Uh, calling banners, make sure um, you've got about three or four banners for scrubs. So if one goes down, uh, player shouts, I'm down, I'm down. And uh, banner one will shout, banner one down. Once uh, banner two's heard that, heard that, next person who shouts down, it will shout banner two down, it will place his banner, so on and so on. Just make sure they're working independently. You don't have to uh, call out what banners to choose and uh, what waters to use, and such. For rotating necros, you don't really have to rotate necros. They're doing a lot of damage anyway. But you want to, if you're trying to um, use the boon stripping idea for necro five, you want to get them to uh, lich forms, probably two if one misses. You got that back up. You want to get them two lich forms working together. For uh, necros, you want maybe um, two on lich form and two on uh, plague, or three on plague, two on lich form. You only need uh, five necros, hopefully. Um, tomes. If you are running three guardians, obviously you're running three tomes. Uh, six tomes, sorry. Three gu guardians in um party wise, I mean, you're running two guardians in each party, so six guardians. That's uh, six tomes, but you want to be um, tomes one, tomes two, and tomes three. So party one is tomes. Uh, well, party one is usually the raid leader. So just say party one's tomes three, party two tomes uh, one, party three tomes two, or just mix it up, just whatever. Just make sure raid leader is uh, not the prioritized tome, not the main tome. Um. Obviously, stability one and stability two. You know that each party's got two guardians. Hopefully, guardian one, stability one, guardian two, stability two. Simple. Um, yeah, that's for numbering. Some more uh, calls. Obviously, knowing powers, lines. Just basically make up your own calls. Make up your own tactics. So, if you need a line, line on them. Line in front of them, line behind them, wherever you want it. Swiftness down, swiftness symbols, no statics. So, uh, speed and warhorns. And if you are um, restacking, waterfield, 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 blast, 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 blast. Make sure everyone blasts it and then uh, catch off. Make sure you dodge and call your direction of the dodge. Don't go, oh, dodge left. Like two seconds after you've already done it. So, alright, we're dodging left now. Everyone dodged left. Everyone knows where you're going in case they have to dodge early. A useful tactic is um, talking. Literally just talking through what you're doing. But um, try and have a plan in your head so you can talk um, obviously one second before you do it. So, I'm empowering. One second after you empower. Right, I want to view now. And we're going to push in, we're going to do double dodge through, we're going to do small damage in the back line, we're going to restack, then we're going to go back through, pop stability 2, then we're going to do full bomb in the back, lich form, bone stripping. Obviously, just form your tactic earlier, make sure everyone knows what they're doing. You're just a reminder basically, and uh, there to react. Alright, so basically, I'm empowering now. Two, three. Make sure you call the one, two, three. Just so everyone knows um, if they're a warrior or a necro, they don't know if the power's finished. So they know when they're about to finish and they're about to move off. Field now. Make sure you give them one second or two just to get that field down. Some mesmers find it hard for some reason. It's a really fucking job, but still find it hard. Call where you want your lines and stacks. Lines in the middle. Pop lines in the middle. Right, small damage in the back. Double dodge through. We're going back through in three, two, one. If you want in powers or water fields, call it out. Obviously, but if you double dodge through and everyone's pretty healed, you don't really need that. Up, oh, you can just use on the move here. Then 
I move them back through in three, two, one, let's go. Bitch ones go, boon strip, boon strip, pull, 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 hammer suns, hammer suns, rings, 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 full damage here, full damage here, full net grow wells, full damage, full damage, full damage, and dodge out to me. And ring powers up. Very hard to uh do it one second earlier. Because your mind's just uh telling you how to react and what to say when you're reacting. It's a really hard uh, skill to do. But it's really useful for your raid and you'll find a lot more survivability. Um a few tips and tricks. I don't have that many but uh main tip is practice practice on these golems. I'm in the heart of the mist right now. Go to the DPS waypoint. The golems are here. Practice on these golems. Practice your whole raid just going through. Um practice in a custom arena or a ten V ten arena. Just practice, practice, practice all your um raid tactics. Practice dodging. Get um half the melee to stand still and then half the melee coming uh about to bomb on them. Just watching videos just to see uh how they play really just most um guilds and most guild fights sorry in raid fights they literally just go through each other time and time again just to find out it's a bigger man. Just going through each other doing damage on the way. Restacking. And he just finds out who's better. Restacking who can do the most damage, who can restack the fastest, who can then get on the fastest, whose range is better. It's really what it comes down to. That um speed and tactics, that's what it comes down to really. Uh, another tip really is uh positioning. I can't really show you positioning because I don't know where you're gonna be. But try not to corner yourself in. Try not to um stay on a wall, try not to be in arrow cart range obviously, try not to be um, if you are uh, towards your tower, try and go towards your portal, stay towards your portal just in case everything goes um, goes south, you can get inside that portal, you can regroup, and if you are fighting an enemy, just get away from their tower, draw them away from their tower, uh, fighting in a keep on a wall, again just make sure you're not in arrow cart range, not in arrow cart, uh, Anything, cannons or whatever, just check around you first. Check you're not going to get um, choked in or uh, double teamed in. Um, tricks, chaos uh, fields, and uh, chaos auroras and chaos other armor, whatever. Chaos armor is really, really useful. I don't know if you read it. It's um gives you either ages, might, or uh, something else. But it gives you ages for three seconds when you're hit, which is really good. And it also can blind them, chill them, or whatever. So if you're really lucky, it'll give you ages and then blinds, and you'll be probably be unhittable for two hits. And that lasts for about three or four hits, three or four seconds. Maybe hit about three or four times. It's a really, really good um, tactic. If we can just get a mesmer to uh, place a chaos field or chaos storm just after he's field, all the melee can then leap in. They'll get all the chaos field, and it'll be really, really effective. Really uh, underused. All these fields are really underused. All the leap combos and the alternate blast combos. Got a, uh, hopefully you've got a hammer guardian in each party. Sorry, I'm tired. Hopefully you've got a hammer guardian in each party, and um, literally it can just blast any combo you call out. Either blind them, put a darkness field down, blind it, fire field down, get some extra might. You don't really need that. I see a lot of um, commanders now. They want purging flames as you enter. So the purge and flames, and then the, ham the hammer guardians can hammer in and blast it for might. But since you've got the might stackers, you don't need that. So it's a combo wasted. What you want is a chaos field. Everyone can then leap into it or blast into it. Really useful. Um, 
a chill field, uh, ice field, really, really useful as well. Chiller. Frost Aurora, chill them. Um, even Fire Aurora, leaping through fire, it's not that great though, because burn damage, you're not condition traded, um, traded toward condition, stats called condition. Just thinking what other fields, mainly darkness and chaos fields are the best. Blinds and uh, chaos armor, and a bit of chill, obviously, it's always great. Uh, you can't get static, static auroras from uh, blasting or leaping. If you leap through a static field, you get a daz daz dazzling strike. It's pretty useful if everyone's leaping in. It's an extra stun, one second stun, but. It's not that uh, effective, not as effective as a chaos field, uh, chaos armor. I'm trying to think of anything else. Yeah, just read up on your combos. I'll paste, I'll um, copy and paste uh, some links, combos, uh, yeah, mechanics, all that business. Just really read up on it. Just really watch, uh, watch some videos. A few more tips. Make sure you know what each class is doing. That's a really top tip. Make sure you've got some knowledge of each class. I see a lot of um, raid leaders. They have no idea what Ellie's and Necros are doing. They kind of know Warriors are hammered on him, but they're on the Guardians 24/7, and they just have no idea what everyone else is doing, and they just expect miracles from everyone. Um, read your skills. Another top tip, read what they actually do. <laughs> a lot of people know what they do, but they've never actually read them, and they find out like that actually this leap has blinded. Just what is a leap? Um, yeah, read up on what combos. Uh, good tip is light fields. Them light fields just keep popping up everywhere. You'll find out when you're blasting. They just keep popping up everywhere and just try and limit them. Try and limit the swiftness fields. Don't use statics for uh, swiftness anymore. You can just literally stack up uh, symbols of swiftness and uh, warriors war horns. You can just really stack them up. Alright, that's going to draw it to an end, guys. It's getting a bit long this video. Hopefully, you found it uh, pretty useful. I found it pretty useful myself just talking through it. Really reminded me of some useful tactics. Yeah, cheers for watching, guys. Uh, I'll post some links in the description. Hope you enjoyed it. Well, I doubt you enjoy it.